In today's episode of the podcast, I'll be sharing with you a very recently finished object as well as a new cast on and talking a little bit about why I love this notebook for planning my knitting projects. So if that sounds like just your cozy glass of iced tea, get comfortable and let's dive in. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. Happy Sunday, everybody. If you are watching this on podcast release day, it is actually Sunday for me here. I wasn't able to film this yesterday, and so I am filming this really early in the morning on Sunday when a lot of you may actually be seeing this. So welcome. I hope you guys are having a great day, and it's really lovely to be with you here today. I have a rather short episode, I think, um, we shall see. I don't have a whole lot to share with you and I'm gonna be talking a little bit about why that is later this week. But before we get into all that I wanna talk about today, I wanna let you know that Fiber for the People, my hand dyed yarn business, just had a shop update on Saturday. The collection is gorgeous. I'm referring to this as the Telegraph Avenue collection. It's inspired by a recent trip my family and I took to the Bay Area and a mural that we discovered on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley. The colorways that I have are right here and they are all dyed on the 100% born and raised Nevada Merino Rambouillet yarn that I source from the Lovely Valley Wool Farm up in northern Nevada. It is absolutely gorgeous yarn. It's a lovely semi-woolen spun beautiful sport weight yarn but these are the colors that I dyed for this shop update inspired by the mural that you see here and they are absolutely stunning. So I just wanted to let you know there was a shop update yesterday. There are still some listings in the shop at the time that I am recording this, and they're beautiful. I have Grapefruit Sorbet, Sunset Over Fort Point. I love this yellow. I love this yellow. I feel like I need to do something with that yellow. This one is North Berkeley, which is where we were staying. And then this one is Velvet Armchair. And this is kind of inspired by a really old antique velvet armchair in the place that we were staying. The collection's beautiful. Head over to the shop at fiberforthepeople.com to check it out and see if there's some listings available and to get your hands on such a gorgeous local breed specific yarn that I know you're going to love. Okay, let's go ahead and get into what I have to share with you today. And I wanna start with my very recently finished object, my little stripy tee. I started working on this, I wanna say two months ago, as kind of a second sample for a pattern I'm having test knit right now called the little black tee. And by the way, I've seen some of the projects coming out of that test knit for the little black tee, and I'm floored, and I cannot wait to release this pattern in May or early summer, and I will keep you posted on that. But this was intended to be a second sample for that design. However, my kind of my mind changed a little bit. I wasn't sure I wanted this to work as a second sample with variations, I figured down the road this may end up becoming its own design. And so I figured it's no longer going to serve as a second sample for the little black tea. It's just going to be its own thing. And here it is. It is my, I don't even know what I'm calling this, my little stripy tea. It is a merino cotton, just really lovely elbow length t-shirt, somewhat cropped top. And I'm crazy about it. I tried it on maybe once throughout the entire process of knitting this. And when it was all finished and blocked, it was the only, it was like the second time I had ever tried it on. And I was just so pleasantly surprised with how well it fit. I kind of knew how it was going to fit because it was for the most part, uh, knit to the dimensions of my little black tee with the exact same yarn and all of that. So I had a pretty good idea of how it was going to fit. Um, but the sleeve length and the body length and the ratio of those two, it's just so perfect. So I wanna stand up and share this with you, but first I wanna let you know that the yarn I use to knit this is a yarn that you can find on Amazon. It's a roughly 50-50 merino cotton yarn. It's an untreated merino and a really gorgeous cotton. And actually, let me grab what I have. Okay, so I don't have any more of the gray left, but I have a couple of other colors. This is what I have left of the black. It's just black, but this is the yarn. It's by About Strings. I've shared this before on the podcast. You're probably familiar with this if you watch the podcast. It's just a really lovely merino cotton yarn. I always forget the, yeah, 55% extra fine merino and 45% cotton. It's DK weight. It only comes in these little 100 meter balls, which is 109 yards. 
Um, the price is reasonable. I'm not gonna say it's cheap or budget. I'm just, it's reasonable. And you can typically find it on Amazon. It tends to sell out a lot, um, but that's where I find it. I love this yarn. It's a scrumptious yarn. It knits really beautifully. And that is what I used to make this. Okay, I wanna get up and show you what it looks like in all of its glory. Let's go ahead and move my chair. All right. You guys, I'm wearing jeans on a Sunday. I'm not going anywhere. I have no plans of going anywhere and I'm wearing jeans just for the purpose of sharing this with you guys. Um, how cute is this? Hello, look at this. Oh, you guys, I'm crazy about it. I'm gonna do a little walk, do a little walk, show you how it looks. Do, do, do. Yeah, love it. I love the sleeve length. I think the sleeve length is perfect. It's flattering on the arm, especially if you tend to be a little bit more insecure about your arms or whatever. I think this is such an ideal sleeve length right above the elbow. It's not a three quarter length sleeve. It's not a cap sleeve or a short sleeve. It's a half sleeve and I think it's great. So I love the sleeve length. I love the compare, well, I don't know what you would call that, but like the difference between the length of the sleeve and the length of the body. I knit the body of this one slightly short, uh, longer than my little black tee. Hold on. So here is the little black tee. If I hold it up, you can see that I knit this about an inch and a half longer than this because I felt like this is cap sleeved and the extra cropped length on this as a cap sleeve seems to make sense. However, because this has a longer sleeve, I wanted the body to be slightly longer. I don't know, I felt like the ratio just looked, seemed better. For as little as I tried this on, I really was kind of winging it. So, you know, I got lucky, but it looks great. And I stopped the striping on the body to have a similar kind of break in that gray color as I have here and up here. And, and I think it just goes, it just goes, it looks so good. I'm really, really very happy with it. If I had to do anything different, and this is something I've mentioned before about cropped tops and sweaters that you see like patterns on Ravelry. I feel like what happens is, is they ride up, I'm gonna turn this way, is they ride up in the back. So it sits nicely in the front, but then it'll kind of be sitting a little high and you'll get this like, um, this little like gapping thing happening in the back. And what that tells me is that there needs to be some like short rows somewhere below the armhole that kind of drop the back down just enough to give it a little bit of an offset. I think that that would be perfect. So if I were to do this again, I would probably incorporate short rows somewhere down here just to bring the back down ever so slightly. But as it is, it doesn't bug me. I think it looks kind of cute. Um, and it works. So yeah, here it is. It's finished. It's my little stripey tee. I love it. I know so many of you guys were hoping for um, for me to write instructions into the little black tee pattern for the stripes and for the sleeve length. Um, yeah, I mentioned this on the last episode of the podcast. I am not going to do that right now. I, I'm not going to make any kind of like promises as to when I will do that or if I will turn this into its own pattern. I'm just not, I'm pumping the brakes on the whole knitwear designer thing in terms of garments right now. And that might change, it really might change, but I just don't know if I wanna do all of that um, right now to create a pattern for everything that I have here. What I will tell you though, is that this is essentially the little black tee with slightly longer sleeves and a cuff to match the cuff on the bottom and stripes. So it's not like there's some secret magic happening to this that's all that much different than that, except for just lengthening the sleeves out, lengthening the body about an inch and a half and adding some stripes. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, in terms of writing it into the pattern, don't count on that. What you get with a little black tee pattern is what I show you, which is a little kind of cap sleeve, somewhat cropped top and it's gorgeous. Um, and I love what I'm seeing coming from the test knitters and I can't wait to share more of that with you guys. So anyway, all that is to say my stripey tee is finished and I'm excited to move on to the next thing. I've had some things I've been wanting to work on, but I've really wanted to get this off the needles before moving on to anything else and kind of diving into anything else headlong. You may know that we have a knit along going on over at the Wool Needles Hands Patreon for all members of the Patreon, both paying and following members, if you will. These are just folks that follow the Patreon. 
This is a knit along where we are following the blog series by Karen Templer on how to knit, or excuse me, how to improvise a top down sweater. So it is the base of operations for this knit along is over on Patreon. You can get the information over there. If you are a free member of Patreon, you can have access to all of the text based information and kind of the roadmap of the knit along. However, if you are a paid patron of the Wool Needles Hands Patreon and you support the channel that way, you have access to the weekly videos that come out and all of the chat threads for all of the different knit alongs. Head over to Patreon, see if it's right for you and check it out. However, this item that I'm working on here is part of that knit along. I am working on improvising a top down V-neck raglan cardigan. And this is the first one that will be knit to completion and I'm not following a particular pattern. I'm improvising this based on the instructions and the guidelines that Karen Templer lays out in her blog series. I definitely suggest you check it out. Um, it's a great place to go to learn more, even if you don't ever knit a garment with the blog series, but maybe you just take your measurements and do the math to kind of acquaint yourself with the process of developing a sweater pattern um, based on your measurements. It's such an eye opener and it's such a skill builder. I feel like all knitters of garments um, could benefit from that. So that's what I'm using. That's what a lot of us are using. And I'm seeing some really awesome looking um, kind of yokes and shoulders coming out of the knit along so far. I haven't seen a lot of developed top portions yet. We're all kind of working on the yokes at this point but I'm loving what I'm seeing. So anyway, this is going to be a V-neck cardigan, a raglan V-neck cardigan. And I'm excited about it. I'm a little nervous. I was super nervous when I decided I was going to make this a cardigan, but as I did the math and took all my notes, I realized I think I'm going to be able to do this relatively easily. It's just knitting a sweater like you normally would, except you're not continuing in the round, you're knitting it flat because you're not closing it up in the front. And I do know you can knit a sweater in the round and then steek it. I just don't wanna do that. Um, so that's not what I'm doing here. So this is going to be a V-neck sweater. Now I've taken all of my notes in my roll bond spiral notebook and my pencil just dropped, so I'm gonna grab. Actually, I'm just gonna grab that pencil, hold on. I love this notebook, I wanna talk about this notebook. All of my notes for this are going into this notebook and one of the things that I've noted is the yarn that I'm using and that is this yarn here. So what you see here is this yarn by Debbie Bliss. It is Donegal Luxury Tweed Yarn. I got this on Lovecrafts. It's a gorgeous yarn. It says it's a worsted weight or Aran weight yarn. I would say it kind of borders on a DK worsted yarn. It has a thicker thin element to it. It's essentially a single ply yarn and it's beautiful. So that's what I'm using for my cardigan. And this is where I'm taking my notes. Okay, so this is a roll bond spiral notebook. It is, it's a pricey spiral notebook. I When I, I got this at Barnes and Noble and then I got a couple other ones on Amazon. They're pricey, you guys, but I love them. It has the strap that holds the notebook closed and it has grid paper, which is fantastic. So you can see here, my lights might be blowing it out, but the grid, the grid lines are really faint, but they are visible. You're probably not going to be able to see them very well, but um, all of my notes are in here so far for the first portion of this knit along. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a little video of this and plug it in so you can kind of see what the paper looks like. But I've taken my notes, I've noted down the yarn that I'm using. I made my gauge swatch, which I'm storing in my notebook. The notebook comes with these little sheet protector uh, pocket inserts like in the notebook. So they're already in the spiral pages. And there's how many? One, two, three, four, five. So I have my little swatch protected in here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah. So it's in there. I'm keeping a few other little notes and doodads in there, but this is my swatch for this. 
I knit my swatch flat because I will be knitting this garment flat because it's a cardigan. I'm not going to be connected, connecting it to knit in the round. So I'm keeping my swatch in here. This swatch is going to give me or gave me all of the information I need to build out my sweater. Um, my, my stitches per inch, my rows per inch. It gives me an idea of the fabric, of the drapiness of the fabric, and that's all really important. I'm also holding a, a row counter in here um, for my increases at my neck. So because this is going to be a V-neck, I'm gonna pull it here. Um, these, this section, actually, let's pull you, Gladys, let's pull you up here for just a moment. Okay, let's see if we can show this off for just a moment. Okay, so here she is. Now, this is forming the, uh, the crescent shape of the neckline. Um, this is a staggered start method neckline, and I know it's focusing on my face. So we're gonna focus it here. I am not using short rows to shape up or to shape out the shoulders and the neck here. I am using what's called the staggered start method. I have a whole video where I talk about this and I will link to it down below. But essentially what I'm doing is I am increasing at all of the raglan seams and I'm also increasing here at the front neck sections. However, because I'm trying to make this a deep V, I'm increasing at the front neck sections every sixth round or row. Um, as opposed to every other row for a crew neck sweater. So I'm doing every six rows and that's going to cause this and this to meet up in the middle where you know you would have like the sweater be able to kind of close over the front far slower than it would meet in the middle if I were doing a crew neck where I would be increasing every other round. So I want that to happen because I want a nice deep V. So that's where I'm at right now is I'm increasing at the raglan seams and I'm also increasing at the front neck so that I can bring that V down the front. Okay, Gladys, you're off the hook. But that's where I'm at with that is I'm building out the V going down the front. And that's why I have this stitch or row counter here. This is a separate row counter from everything else to remind me when to increase at the front neck. So I keep that in here so it doesn't get accidentally clicked by one of my lovely children. And then I also have in here, I found this at Michael's the other day and you can get these online, but these are those like free takeaway patterns that you can get um, that are usually like hanging at the craft store um, for you to take. And I grabbed it because it is essentially a basic top-down raglan cardigan. And I wanted something as a reference point to go with the blog, in addition to me hunting down other references as well. I just kind of liked having this right here to give me an idea of the construction, of the dimensions. And so I'm keeping that in my notebook as well in one of these little sheet protectors back here. This is why I love this notebook. It's got places for some notes. It, got, it has a place for your swatch. And it's just a really cool looking notebook. Yeah, I, I stink and love it. So all of my notes are in here. Um, this little diagram that you see here, it looks like a little like partial circle. That is the staggered start approach diagram that you're going to create when you figure out how many stitches you're gonna cast on, how many of those are sleeve stitches, how many of those are front and back stitches and so on and so forth. So I've got that down there. So that is why I love this book or this notebook. And uh, that's what I've got going on in there. And I'm really excited about it. I, I imagine, I don't know, at the rate that I'll be working on this, considering I won't be working on much else, keep that in the back of your mind for a later video this week. Um, I imagine I'll have considerably more progress to show you on Sunday. I'm hoping to have at least separated for sleeves by Sunday. I paced out the knit along. Um, I've paced it out already. However, we're kind of feeling it out as we go. I don't want f people to feel rushed because it is very much, you, you are building a sweater um, from the ground up, but I'm excited about it. I'm excited to have a really lovely kind of boyfriend style, deep V-neck cardigan with this gorgeous yarn. Oh, I love it. I mean, just look how pretty that is. 
so pretty. Yeah, so that is what I have been working on, guys, and that is all I wanted to share with you guys today. I have some plans and things that I need to do today, but I wanted to make sure to share my finished stripy tee with you and the progress I've made so far on the KT Cal. If you are interested in joining the Knit Along, it is absolutely not too late. Just head over to Patreon, look for the posts on Patreon that say KT Cal, and that will be there. Um, there's actually a collection on Patreon just for the KT Cal that you can go to and see all of the posts. If you become a paying member over on Patreon and help support the channel that way, I am absolutely grateful to you. Thank you so much for that support, but you will also have access to additional content within that KT Cal umbrella or underneath the KT Cal umbrella, including weekly video updates where I share kind of the progress I've made on my project. So definitely check that out, see if it's right for you. But other than that, that's all I have for today. I hope you guys are having a fantastic weekend and enjoying your projects. I'm excited for this week's midweek ramble, which will be coming your way on Wednesday. I am exploring a, an idea that I wanna share with you that's kind of not a new revelation, I don't know. It's just a notion I want to share with you, a plan that I have moving forward and something I think you might be interested in giving a try yourself. So definitely stay tuned for Wednesday's midweek ramble. And if you took value from today's video or enjoyed yourself at any point, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe and click the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload new content here on the channel, which is every Wednesday and Sunday with an occasional video sprinkled in. Until we meet again for Wednesday's episode of the midweek ramble, Happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.